This is lovely. I'm gonna read all summer long outside. Oh, that was a bee. It's too hot. Oh, that was a hornet. There's too much sun. Oh, that was a wasp. Hi, my name's Bee and welcome to my channel. Mama needs to read romance and go inside. Going in, it's hot. Whose idea was this? Well, summer is over and it's time to reflect on all the great reads we had in the past couple months. Do let me know in the comments, what was your favorite read of June, July, or August? I'm gonna tell you about my top 10 right now and two honorable mentions. They're coming out later this year. Don't worry, there'll be chapters at the bottom to help you navigate. And if you wanna hear my more long-winded reviews, I'll have some cards linked above. As we would say in the summer, let's dive in. Let's start with a book that just came out in August, An Earl to Remember by Stacey Reed. Read. This is book two in the Unforgettable Love series. A woman trying to make it as a chef gets kicked off a yacht of a very entitled, very lecherous lord. However, when he washes up ashore and has amnesia, she decides to take advantage of the situation, tell everyone that they're married, and put him to work on her land. What happens next is spicy, hilarious, incredibly sweet, and has an incredibly satisfying ending. What made this a top book of the summer? One scene in particular where he's running, clutching a basket of eggs with a little girl who is growing to love him, being chased by a chicken. Another book that debuted this past summer was Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. We have a woman with face blindness who's a portrait artist. She's fallen in love with two men, but she can't see either of their faces. The premise sounded hilarious. I was ready to laugh, which I did, but I also got a heavy dose of beautiful truths for life. I also loved this author's note about why romance books are important. And a scene that really stole the show this summer for me included her roller skating on on the roof of her building to a disco song, then running into the man who might be the one for her. Super cute. Yet another book that just came out this summer that I was lucky enough to get the advanced reader copy of, What's a Duke Got to Do With It? Which is book two of the Sinful Spinsters series by Christina Britton. I've fallen so hard for this author and this series. We have two people, Sebastian and Katrina, who were just about to start a relationship, but fate had other plans. Well, four years later, this is now a four forbidden romance. Every scene where the two of them were together jumped off the page. This gorgeous beach setting really did it for me as well. But the real showstopper were the scenes where they were together, achingly aware of one another and desperate for the other person, but unable to show it. The tension was incredible. So gripping, so good, and such a happy ending. Another book I just couldn't get enough of came out this summer by Allie Hazelwood. Love theoretically. As always, it's set in the world of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. This enemies to lovers book was so delicious. I literally laughed harder in this contemporary romance than I have ever laughed while reading a book. It was hysterical and also extremely spicy. Jack is the perfect man. He falls first and he falls hard, maybe a little too hard, but the all consuming passion and love was there, which I really enjoyed. A scene stealer for me were the many references to the books and movies of Twilight, which had me feeling nostalgic and planning a read along for 2024. I love a good alien romance by Ruby Dixon and the Ice Planet Barbarian series and the Ice Home series has provided one one fabulous story after another, but I was especially taken with the novella Gail's Family, which is technically part of the Ice Home series. This story follows a gal in her 50s, as well as an older alien gentleman. They've both loved and lost in big, big ways. For the most part, they've healed, but still have a bit of healing to do, but they find solace in one another and create a family in a very unique and touching way. The scene stealer that really stuck with me were all the ways that Vaza found to flirt with Gail during the story. It was so adorable. I read my first Diana Quincy this summer. This was book one of the Clandestine Affairs series, Her Night with the Duke. I went into this wanting to try an age gap romance and got so much more than I bargained for. Our heroine is half Arabic and it was really neat seeing her representing her culture in the story. What a neat topic in an historical romance. She was strong and he was fiercely in love with her. This was a forbidden romance 
romance that had me clutching my pearls. The two of them have a chance encounter one night, and then she discovers that he's supposed to marry her stepdaughter. I adored this woman especially. She takes no prisoners while being true to herself. One Steen stealing moment for me, she was showing her displeasure in someone by throwing golf balls at them. You're not going to see that in too many historical romances. I laughed so hard. I also fell in love with the first book of the Forever Yours series by Cara Bastone, Just a Heartbeat Away. This book taught me that she is far more than just her audible originals, which I did thoroughly enjoy, but she can really write a beautiful romance novel that's deep, humorous, and has some very spicy scenes that I really did not expect. This also age gap romance about a man in his early 40s and a woman in her late 20s. Our hero is ready to move on after the death of his wife many years before, and it turns out to be his child's former teacher who teaches him how to love again while he teaches her what true love really feels like. A standout scene for me included a scene after a special teaching event, the two of them together in a dark hallway where they finally admit the depth of their feelings was steamy but left you wanting more. I have the pleasure of reading several new to me Tessa Dares, and the standout for me, number one, was Romancing the Duke. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It includes a woman who is trying to overcome the stigma placed on her by society after having been a child star, essentially, due to her father's beloved books. And we have a gentleman who is a recluse. He's injured and blind and not willing to let anyone in. The two of them really see one another for who they truly are. And I know that sounds cliche, but it was a whole other level in this book. I'm serious. Our hero is a prideful man, very stubborn. So the standout scene for me, which I will be thinking about for a very long time, includes a speech that he gives in front of everyone to demonstrate the depth of his love. I want to use the words, but I don't want to ruin it for anyone. And I also don't want to cry because it was so incredible, but it, it made me sob in a happy way. Fabulous ending. I read four of the Ruthless Rival series books this summer, all by Kate Bateman and all terrific, but this one was the standout for me, A Daring Pursuit, which is book two. This enemies to lovers book was so incredibly yummy. Our heroine is ready to give up on love and just take a match that's not made in heaven. Well, our hero from a rival family is not about to let that happen. He wants to teach her how good love can be. And I have never enjoyed a book where he's got a teacher as much as I enjoyed this one. Why? The standout scenes, of which there are many, include him teaching while ravishing and especially cherishing, which is my favorite. And last but not least in my top 10, what better staycation than to read The People We Meet on Vacation? Emily Henry is superb at taking dual timelines and mashing them together to make every chapter unputdownable and keep you guessing until almost the very end. I thoroughly enjoyed this friends to lovers story about a woman who realizes maybe too late that her best friend might be the only man she wants. I loved the different settings of the different vacations they go on, but the big scene stealer for me, when the tension finally builds to a point where you know a big reveal is coming, they were already overheated and things got even hotter in a scene I will not soon forget. And now my two honorable mentions that I decided to hold to the end for two reasons. One, they are set at winter time. And two, they're not out yet. <laughs> they're both coming out in November. Let's talk about this one, One Night in Hartswood by Emma Denny. This is her first novel. This is an MM road trip romance with hidden identities. One gentleman is supposed to get married even though he has no interest in women. And the other gentleman doesn't realize that his sister is supposed to marry the other gentleman. The winter scenes were written so beautifully. The slow burn was scrumptious. It was emotionally deep. It was incredibly moving. I wasn't sure how it would end, but was very satisfied. I hope that you get a chance to read it in November, if this sounds like your cup of tea, because you will love it. And last but definitely not least, almost like being in love. Anybody out there a Gene Kelly fan? I adore him. Talking American musicals from roughly the 40s and 50s. This one is basically a role reversal Brigadoon at Christmas. We have two ladies that are in Scotland. They get stranded in the snow only to discover that they are whisked back in time to a magical Christmas village and are rescued by a super 
cute highlander. I found myself highlighting so many lines. I swooned so hard. This one's also coming out in November. I highly recommend it if you like any of the things I just said. It's a novella, so it's a quick one too. I think it's gonna be perfect for the holidays. Well, that is it for me. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you are doing well and enjoying whatever you're reading, regardless of what season it is. Until next time, thanks so much. Take care. Bye.